Finally, we will talk about sex hormones here and the increased concentration of the sex hormone that occurs during puberty is responsible for your final growth spurt that results in attaining your adult posture. And the origin of these hormones, primarily the gonads, also some production occurs in the adrenal cortex uh, and this is important uh, in later life as uh, production from the gonads decreases. Um, as I said earlier, and I'll reiterate because it's an important point, the sex hormones promote the lengthening of the long bones but at the same time they promote the closure of their epiphyses so then they halt growth. So they give you this final spurt but then stop it by preventing any more cartilage being laid down. And it's now known that the growth of the skeleton during puberty is the result of increased estrogen in both male and females. In other words, these sex hormones travel to the location uh, and are converted inside into estrogen whether it's testosterone or estrogen being released by the sex organs the convert, uh, testosterone is converted to estrogen via aromatase or target organs and then they stimulate uh, their effect and the actual increase in height of the long bones is due to growth hormone of uh, IGF-1 and the action of IGF-1 is stimulated by the sex hormones. In other words, at the target sites, at the organs, the sex hormones stimulate the production of receptors for IGF-1. And so during puberty, the release of IGF-1 stimulated by growth hormone uh, elicits a greater effect on growth. So you still need growth hormone release at the time. You still need IGF-1 release and sex hormones, the sex hormones make that um, release more potent and so you grow faster. Uh, it's worth reviewing uh, the, the release of sex hormones from uh, the gonads and it's controlled by again the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. The hypothalamus releases gonadotrophin releasing hormone, the pituitary then releases the gonadotrophins, both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone and then the, the hormones released, uh, testosterone and oestrogen feed back onto the pituitary and the hypothalamus to regulate their release. And then we have the release of inhibin or activin that either uh, inhibit or uh, stimulate release from the pituitary. And the life cycle of the gonadotrophins are shown here. On the left, we have uh, the female only, and we get a couple of spikes of gonadotrophins during the early years, the FSH and LH release. And then it drops down until we get to puberty where they start to rise again. And then obviously you have um, the period of menzies during the reproductive years giving monthly surges and spikes of LH and FSH and then after menopause where you get no more oestrogen released because ovulation stops the lack of feedback makes the gonadotrophins uh, remain high and if we compare that on the right then to the release of the gonadotrophins in the male and the female it's much more consistent but even in the male during senescence you get a rise in FSH and LH as this feedback mechanism is reduced because you get a lowering of testosterone released in the male but it's just not as acute or dramatic as in the female where there is very little oestrogen being produced uh, at all. Um, the Sex hormones have an effect on bone growth um, <clears throat> and bone growth in adolescence is mainly uh, comprised of modelling. Uh, bone growth exceeds um, bone demineralization um, even though you are still having formation of bone at one site and reabsorption at another. Uh, but then in the adult life after puberty, 
the bones are in a steady state balance. You have uh, modeling and remodeling uh, happening at a steady state until you get to uh, later on in life where the sex hormones start to fall away and this causes um, an imbalance. So parathyroid hormone and calcitonin usually uh, control uh, calcium concentration, but uh, estrogen and testosterone act on bone to decrease the rate of both osteoclast and osteoblast uh, when there's enough sex hormone around. This is in balance, but then once estrogen falls away, the osteoclasts tend to become dominant as uh, the osteoblasts are inhibited because of the lack of estrogen and this then causes problems with this bone remodeling which results in weaker bones. And so low estrogen levels allow osteoclasts to live longer, osteoblasts to live shorter resulting in greater bone resorption and thus osteoporosis. So uh, particularly in the aging female, although it does happen in men, uh, postmenopausal, the bones become brittle because you get more bone decay than, than bone formation. And this is due to the dual mechanisms of estrogen's action. You have the classical nuclear pathway and the non-classical extracellular pathway. And basically the um, nuclear mechanisms decreases the rate of remodeling by acting on both osteoclasts and osteoblasts but the extra nuclear mechanisms mainly works on the osteoblasts and keeps the osteoclasts alive and so because of this when you don't have enough estrogen um, the osteoclasts win out and you get more bone degradation and that results in osteoporosis.